Hello learners, this is Habiba with Excel with me. If you like the video, please do like, share, subscribe and comment below. Let's start today's class that is Central Teacher Eligibility Test Paper 2 Social Science Class 6 Our Pass 1 History that is from NCERT Chapter number 10 New Empires and Kingdoms. Let's start with the practice questions number 1. We know about Samadragupta from a long inscription inscribed on the Ashokan pillar. Where is it? It is at Alhabad. It was composed as a kavya by Harisena, who was a poet and a minister at the court of whom? That is Samadragupta. The inscription inscribed on the Ashokan pillar is of a special kind known as a prashasti, a Sanskrit word meaning in praise of. Uh, the word meaning of prashasti also can be asked. The answer will be in praise of. What were composed for some of the rulers such as Gautami Putra Shri Shatakarni? They were prashastis, that is in praise of. Now let's see the statements related to Samudra Gupta's prashasti. The poet praised the king in glowing terms as a warrior, as a king who won victories in battle, who was learned and the best of poets. He is also described as equal to the gods. Now the prashasti was composed in very long sentences. So all the statements are true. Now let's see the map here showing important cities and kingdoms. This map is based on the information provided in the prashastis. We can see here inner states which are in pink color and outer states which are in blue color and the Aryavarta that is in green color, Kanauj, Prayaga, Pataliputra, Nalanda and all. Now let's see the cities conquered by the Guptas which are dotted in red color. Here coastal areas here, southern coastal area that is Amravati is very very important here. And then black spotted city, cities also very important here spread all over Pataliputra, Nalanda, Kanauj, Prayaga, Mathura, Thanesar, Barauch. Vallabhi, Ujjain, then your Satavahanas are there here in the west side, southwest, then Ajanta, Ihole is marked here. You can see Ihole, very, very important site. We will understand the questions related to Ihole also here, Chalukyas area, then Pallavas here, Kanchipuram, then Cheras here, these are the three important in the southern India. Chalukya, Chera and Pallava. Then Pandya also very important here. Madhura located here. Puhar. Then Arikamedu. We have learned in the previous classes about Arikamedu. Then Mahabalipuram also very important. So these are all the important places we have to remember. Now let's start with the questions now. Harishena describes four different kinds of rulers and tells us about Samudragupta's policies towards them. So let's understand four very important rulers here, kinds, different kinds of rulers here. The first one, the rulers of Aryavarta which we have seen in the green color in the map. The area shaded in green on the map. Here there were nine rulers. You can see here shaded in the green color. Nine rulers were there here. uprooted they were uprooted and their kingdoms were made a part of Samudra Gupta's empire now second the rulers of Dakshinapatha here there were 12 rulers some of whose capitals are marked with red dots on the map you can see here again the red dots here you can see the red dots 
these are very important they were uprooted they surrendered to samudragupta after being defeated and he then allowed them to rule again the third the inner circle of neighboring states that is including assam coastal bengal nepal and a number of gana sanghas now remember in the chapter 5 we have learned some questions related to gana sanghas in the northwest marked in purple on the map they were brought tribute followed his orders and attended his court next the rulers of the outlying areas marked in blue on the map perhaps the descendants of the kushanas and sakas and the ruler of sri lanka who submitted to him and offered daughters in marriage so these are the four kinds of rulers under samudragupta what were the important centers of the gupta rulers they were prayaga the old name for allahabad then ujjain and patliputra they are they are in patna then vikrama samvat we have to understand the era beginning in the 58 bce is traditionally associated with gupta king chandragupta 2 who had founded it as a mark of victory over the shakas and assumed the title vikramaditya yes this could be one question who got the title vikramaditya that was chandragupta 2 very important question then samudragupta's mother Kumara Devi belonged to the Lichavi Gana while his father Chandragupta was the first ruler of the Gupta dynasty who was the first ruler of Gupta dynasty that was Chandragupta first ruler of Gupta dynasty to adopt the grand title of Maharaja Dhi Raja this is also important a title that Samudragupta also used for himself his great grandfather and grandfather are mentioned simply as Maharaja who was the later ruler of the gupta dynasty who know about him from inscriptions and coins who led an expedition to western india where he overcame the last of the shakas he was chandragupta to samudragupta's son we can find out about the gupta rulers and some kings from biographies and their inscriptions and coins name one of such rulers that was harshavardhana Now Harshavardhana who ruled nearly 1400 years ago who was his court poet he was Banabhatta Banabhatta wrote Harshavardhana's biography what was it the Harsha Charitra that was written in Sanskrit what gives us the genealogy of Harsha and ends with his be- becoming king that was the Harsha Charitra it was mentioned in the Harsha Charitra who spent a lot of time at harsha's court and left a detailed account of what he saw that was yuan zhang who was not the eldest son of his father but became king of thaneshwar after both his father and elder brother died he was harsha harsha tried to cross the narmada to march into the deccan but was stopped by which ruler belonging to the chalukya dynasty very important person that is pulakeshin 2 who were the most important ruling dynasties in south india they were the pallavas and the chalukyas now whose kingdom spread from the region around their capital kanchipuram to the kaveri delta that was the kingdom of the pallavas who was centered around the raichur daob between the rivers krishna and tungabhadra they were the chalukyas what was the capital and an important trading center of the chalukyas that was aihol who was the best known chalukya ruler obviously pulakeshin 2 we know about pulakeshin 2 from a prashasti composed by his court poet that is ravi kirti very important person ravi kirti both the pallavas and the chalukyas gave way to new rulers belonging to the rashtrakutas and chola dynasties who was a poet and mahadandanayaka or chief judicial officer like his father he was harishena besides being a mahadandanayaka who was a kumar amatya meaning an important minister and a uh, sandhi vigrahika meaning a minister of war and peace that was harishena all the titles are given to this person all the responsibilities are given to this person that is harishena now let's see the local administration included the nagara shreshti or chief banker or merchant of the city 
Now, who was the chief banker of the merchant of the city? That was Nagara Shreshti. Now, leader of the merchant caravans? That was the Sarthavaha. Sarthavaha. Then, who was the chief craftsperson called? That was Prathama Kulika. And the head of the Kayasthas or scribes. So, these are all important local administrations we have to remember. Now, who collected revenue from the land and used this to maintain soldiers and horses and provide equipment for warfare? They were Samantas. Now, whenever the ruler was weak, who tried to become independent? They were Samantas. The inscriptions of the Pallavas mention a number of local assemblies. These included the Sabha, which was an assembly of Brahmin land owners. This also could be one individual question. What is Sabha? That was assembly of Brahmin land owners. Then this assembly functioned through subcommittees which looked after irrigation, agriculture operations, making roads, local temples, etc. These two statements are true. Now what was a village assembly found in areas where the land owners were not Brahmins? That was the Ur. What was an organization of merchants? That was the Nagaram. Now the assemblies were controlled by whom? That was rich and powerful land owners and merchants. So these two also very very important questions. That is village assembly, the Ur and the organization of merchants, the Nagaram. Definite questions. Who is known for his place depicting life in the king's court? Very important person that is Kalidasa. An interesting feature about the place is that the king and most Brahmins are shown as speaking Sanskrit while women and men other than the king and Brahmins use Prakrit. So these two statements are important, very true. Then what was Kalidasa's most famous play is the story of the love between a king named Dushyanta and a young woman named Shakuntala. Very well known story that is Abhignana Shakuntalam. Now name the Chinese pilgrim. Notice the plight of those who were treated as untouchables by the high and mighty and expected to live on the outskirts of the city. That was the Chinese pilgrim Fahian. Now who provides us with a vivid picture of the king's army on the move? That was Banabhatta. Now let's see the end of the chapter with elsewhere. Arab is a desert. It was at the hub of communications for centuries. In fact, Arab merchants and sailors played an important role in the sea trade between India and Europe. Others who lived in Arabia were the Badawns, pastoral tribes, depending mainly on camels, hardly animals that could survive in the desert. Now around 1400 years ago, Prophet Muhammad introduced a new religion, Islam, in Arabia. Like Christianity, Islam was a religion that laid stress on the equality and unity of all before Allah, the one supreme God. Now, Quran, the sacred book of Islam. Now, within a hundred years, Islam spread to North Africa, Spain, Iran and India. Now, Arab sailors who were already familiar with the coastal settlements of the subcontinent now brought the new religion with them. Now, Arab soldiers conquered Sindh in present-day Pakistan about 1300 years ago. So, we come, to end, uh, we come to the end of this chapter and the practice questions. If you like these questions, please do like, share, subscribe and comment below. Thanks for your attention and time. Happy learning.